give your church more servant leaders who will faithfully serve as priests and consecrated men and women that your flock may be built in faith, hope, and love. Make the seed of vocation grow in the hearts of our young people as they discern your plan for them. Give them the courage to embrace your will. Give them the grace of perseverance and wisdom in the face of hardships and sacrifices. Reveal to their parents the beauty of offering their sons and daughters as gifts for the service of the church. Grant bountiful blessings to their family for their generosity. Make the Christian community our partner and bestow on them a deep love and dedication for the vocation, animation, and support. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Mary, model and mother of vocations. Pray for us. Pray your poor priests. O Almighty Eternal God, look upon the face of your Son, and for love of him who is the Eternal High Priest, have pity on your priests. Remember, O most compassionate God, that they are but weak and frail human beings. Stir upon them the grace of their vocation which is in them by the imposition of the bishop's hands. Keep them close to you, lest the enemy prevail against them, so that they may never do anything in the slightest degree unworthy of their sublime vocation. O Jesus, I pray for your faithful and fervent priests, for your unfaithful and tepid priests, for your priests laboring at home or abroad in distant mission fields, for your tempted priests, for the lonely and desolate priests, for your young and elderly priests, for your sick and dying priests, for the souls of your priests in purgatory. But above all, I commend to you the priest dearest to me, the priest who baptized me, the priest who absolved me from my sins, the priest at whose masses I assisted and who gave me your body and blood in holy communion, the priest who thought and instructed me or helped and encouraged me, all the priests to whom I am indebted in any way. O Jesus, keep them all close to your heart and bless them abundantly in time and eternity. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Gentle reminders. To maintain the solemnity of the Holy Eucharistic celebration, may we humbly remind everyone of the following. Put your phone, mobile phones on silent mode. Refrain from tinkering with your phone, especially during the Mass. Don't let your pets sit on the pews or the kneelers. Please attend to your kids while the celebration is going on. We ask for your understanding and cooperation in creating a conducive environment for worship and in making our celebration truly meaningful. Thank you. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today is the dedication of the Basilicas of Saints Peter and Paul. Our presiders, Reverend Father Jerome Siciliano, Rector of the Etra Shrine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
Thanks be to God, He did not allow the typhoon to devastate many of our kababayans here in Metro Manila. But we pray for the province of Catanduanes, especially the other provinces that were badly hit by Typhoon Pepito. We pray for our brothers and sisters who suffered much from this calamity. May the grace of God sustain them, and may God's grace also move other people to support the victims of this calamity. Today is the memorial of the dedication of Saints Peter and Paul, two major basilicas in Rome. We pray that as a church, we may always be united, and as a church, we may always focus our gaze on the Lord Jesus. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love. Let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Defend your church, O Lord, by the protection of the holy apostles, that as she received from them the beginnings of her knowledge of things divine, so through them she may receive, even to the end of the world, an increase in heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him, to show his servants what must happen soon. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who gives witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ by reporting what he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud, and blessed are those who listen to this prophetic message and heed what is written in it, for the appointed time is near. John, to the seven churches in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne. I heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write this, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands, says this, I know your works, your labor, and your endurance, and that you cannot tolerate the wicked. You have tested those who call themselves apostles, but are not, and discovered that they are impostors. Moreover, you have endurance and have suffered for my name, and you have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have lost the love you had at first. Realize how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Otherwise I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. 
He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging, and hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The people walking in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent, but he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Then Jesus stopped and ordered that he be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He replied, Lord, Please, let me see. Jesus told him, Have sight. Your faith has saved you. He immediately received his sight and followed him, giving glory to God. When they saw this, all the people gave praise to God. The good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Na sobrahan po yata yung anticipation ng mga tao sa bagyo. Kaya kahapon, konti yung nagsimba. O ganun din, ngayong tanghali, ko konti din. Pati po yung clinic, hindi rin pumasok yung mga volunteers. Kasi nga naman, ay may announcement na baka ngayon po dumating ay yung bagyo. But thanks be to God. Because the typhoon did not hit us. Sa Bicol po, Sunod-sunod yung mga bagyo na tumama, pero buti na lang itong Typhoon Pepito ay hindi na dumaan doon sa probinsya namin sa Albay. Pero ang tinamaan naman ho ay ang Katanduanes. Yung bagyong Christine ang siyang talagang tumama din sa Albay at batid ninyo kung gaano katindi yung naging adverse impact nito ano, sa mga Albayanos. Pero ganun pa man, uulitin ko, thanks be to God, dahil hindi naman ho nakapaminsala sa atin uh, yung bagyo na yan na si Pepito. But then again, I think it would be good that we extend our help to those who are badly affected by Typhoon Pepito. So meron sila yung mga pillars ano, ng simbahan dahil sila yung tumayo na mga pinuno ng simbahan. Directly, St. Peter was appointed uh, by Jesus uh, to be the rock, the foundation of the church. But then, eto naman si St. Paul ay sumunod dahil ang dami din po niyang ginawa para sa pagpapalaganap ng salita ng Diyos. And in fact, St. Paul was also credited to having all these Christian communities in building rather these Christian communities early on. Katulong niya dito yung kanyang mga naging disipulo, sina Barnabas, so on and so forth. Ano? Dami nila ng mga 
si Titus, ng mga sinulatan niya, mga leader po ito ng mga Christian communities. So ngayon, ang simbahan ay nagdedicate din ng mga malalaking basilika in their honor. St. Peter, you know that very well. It's the basilica in Rome, okay, sa loob mismo ng Vatican. At doon ginagawa yung mga ceremonies, katulad ng canonization ng mga saints, and then of course, other very important liturgical celebrations in the Catholic Church. etong si St. Paul naman, may basilika din, pero outside the city of Rome. Okay? At nauna po na itinatag itong St. Peter's Basilica. Mga ilang taon din po na nauna. Ang nagtatag po ng St. Peter's Basilica ay si Emperor Constantine. But of course, through the years, nag-undergo po ito ng mga renovations, repairs, until ito na ho, nakasalukuyan na basilika ang nakita natin. But originally, it was built by Emperor Constantine. The Basilica of St. Paul was also built by Emperor Constantine. Pero yung kanyang pinagawa na simbahan, yung Basilica ni St. Paul, simbahan ni St. Paul, ay medyo maliit pa nun. So nung ito ay nasira because of wars and many other calamities, ay nagpatayo naman si Emperor Valerian. Okay? Patayo din siya ng isa pong basilika. Ito na nga pong St. Peter at St. Paul outside the walls. Pero nag-undergo din po yan ng mga renovations kasi over time naman, kinakailangan talaga no, na-improve mo ay yung structure and facilities until yan po ay na-dedicate under the papacy of Pope Pius IX. So, ang ginawa po ni Pope Pius IX ay nagkaroon ng isang uh, celebration na lang ano, para sa dedication ng Basilica of St. Peter's in the Vatican and St. Uh, Paul outside the walls. So, ayan po. So, ano yung makukuha natin dito? Bakit binibigyan natin ng diin ang celebration na yan? Because, you know, we marvel at the beauty and the grandeur of churches. In fact, ano, kapag nakakakita tayo ng mga magagandang simbahan, evangelization moment din yan. Anong ibig sabihin ng evangelization moment? Kapag napupunta po tayo sa mga nagagandang simbahan, namamangha tayo. Di ba? At kapag namamangha tayo, doon napupunta yung ating attention sa kagandahan. But more than the kagandahan, okay, doon natin na-realize, wow, this is a beautiful house of prayer. The emphasis now is the house of prayer. It's the house of God. And so therefore, the beauty of that place is very much tied up with God. Tama po ba? Hindi ka naman doon nagpunta para lang mag-marvel ka lang sa kagandahan, pero mas na-appreciate mo dahil yun ay tahanan ng Diyos. Tama po ba? Especially for those who have been to pilgrimages. That's why, when I visit all these churches, hindi lang po ako kuha, 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 ng, kuha ng picture, pero nakakagaan at nakaka-inspire na luluhod ka sa harapan ng isang napakagandang altar at nagdadasal ka. Sino ang dinadasalan mo? Hindi po yung nagpagawa ng simbahan. Ang dinadasalan mo, walang iba kundi ang Diyos. So the point of the matter is, churches are always united to Christ. Laging kaugnay ang simbahan sa ating Panginoon. Amen. O, kaya kapag nagang maganda na ho yung Edsa Shrine, makita din ninyo sana at maramdaman ninyo yung presensya ng Diyos. O, improve pa ho natin to. Kasi yung iba, nagreklamo pa rin. Ano? O, di pag nagreklamo, di mag-donate. <laughs> okay. So then, uh, the gospel. Uh, yung gospel, pangatlong point ano? sa ating reflection ngayon. Alam nyo sa buhay natin, merong mga taong nagpapapansin. And sometimes, yung mga taong ito, we get annoyed with them. Tama ba? Tama po ba ako? Kapag may nagpapapansin, ano, they do oh, each and every form of inanities para lang mapansin. Ayaw na ayaw natin, naiinis tayo. Di ba? We get really annoyed and pissed off. Pero, ganun din naman na nangyari sa gospel. Nung nagpapapansin yung bulag, alam nyo sinabi ng mga tao, uh, <laughs> tumahimik ka nga. Masyado kang maingay. No? Kasi yung mga tao ay, well, na-annoy uh, doon sa isang bulag na nagpapapansin. Pero iba yung naging reaction ni Jesus. Ang naging reaction niya, binigyan niya ng pansin yung isang bulag na nagpapapansin. At ang ginawa pa ni Jesus, pinagaling pa yung bulag nakakita. You know, ang practical lesson lang sa akin ito, ha? kapag meron tayong pangangailangan, 
pwedeng pwede tayo magpapansin sa Diyos. Pero kapag magpapapansin ka sa Diyos, wag naman yung tipong entitled na entitled ka. Wag naman yung tipong binabraso mo yung Diyos. Wag naman yung tipong parang ikaw pa ang may pang may pinangahawakan sa Diyos. Pag magpapapansin ka, ito yung tipong may humility. Pag magpapapansin ka, ito yung merong sincerity. Pag magpapapansin ka, ito yung tipong tinitingnan mo siya na ikaw ang may utang sa kanya. At ikaw naman ay umaamot lang ng pabor. Kasi yung ibang nagpapapansin, ang feeling nila, they own you. Ang feeling nila, dapat bigyan mo sila ng atensyon kasi sila lang ang importante. But that should not be the case. So I think this blind man taught us something. Yes, we can present our grievances to the Lord. But when we do that, there should always be that humility and sincerity. And I guess that is something that the blind man expressed or showed Jesus. So as we continue to celebrate this Mass, conclusion, in the church, we all belong to Christ. And so therefore, wala dapat na na-undermine, wala dapat na isinasantabi, bulag man yan, mahirap man yan, yan man ay maliit na tao, we all belong to the church. And as a church, we belong to Christ. At tayo ho, na mga andi dito ngayon, let us make each other feel that indeed, we belong to this community and all of us belong to Christ. Amen. After Jesus asked for the blind man to be brought to him, the crowd that had rebuked the blind man led him to Jesus. May we encourage people in dire need to have recourse to the Lord. Lord, give us the light of life. Lord, give us the light of life. May the church, the people of God, have empathy for the blind and the disabled and seek to help them in their difficulties. We pray, Lord, Lord give, give us, us the, the light, light of, life. of life. May government officials gain the trust of their constituents by their empathy and hard work, especially in times of crisis and great need. We pray, Lord, Lord give, give us, us the, the light, light of, life. of life. May the Lord come to the aid of the vulnerable in nursing homes and prisons, the lonely, and those suffering from economic difficulties. We pray, Lord, Lord give, give us, us the, the light, light of, life. of life. May we have eyes to see our own sins and imperfections and beg the Lord for spiritual healing. We pray, Lord, Lord give, give us, us the, the light, light of, life. of life. May our departed brothers and sisters see the light that never fades in God's kingdom. We pray, Lord, Lord give us the light of life. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. We also include in our prayers all the intentions of in this Mass, special intentions by John Alex and Gabriel, healing of Conchita, Salvation, Marilu, and all those who are sick, thanksgiving by Violeta, and birthday of Mediatrix. We pray. Lord, give us the light of life. Almighty Father, Jesus took pity on the blind man of Jericho and those who came to him for healing. May we go to you in our need, trusting that you will hear the cry of the poor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that may sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. As we bring you this offering of our service, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that the truth handed down to us by the ministry of the apostles, Peter and Paul, may endure undefiled in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Jean and Antonio, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, especially... Christina, Elsie, Leslie, Wilma Anita, Roselino, Rafael Nicolás Amando, Raul De Novo, Erlinda, Mercia, Constancia, Asuncion, and all the poor souls in Purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. We share now with one another the peace of Christ. Peace be with you all. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited in this meal. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your people, we pray, O Lord, nourished by the bread of heaven, rejoice in commemorating the apostles Peter and Paul, for it is through your gift that we are governed under their patronage through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel for the prayer for peace. Lord Jesus, we come to you in our need, creating us an awareness of the massive forces of conflict that threaten our world today, and grant us a sense of urgency to activate the forces of goodness, of justice, of love, and of peace. Where there is armed conflict, let us stretch out our arms our brothers and sisters. Where there is abundance, let there be simple lifestyle and sharing. Where there is poverty, let there be dignified living and constant striving for just structures. Where there is selfless ambition, let there be humble service. Where there is injustice, let there be atonement. Where there is despair, let there be hope in the good news. Where there are wounds of division, let there be unity and wholeness. Help us to be committed to the building of your kingdom, not seeking to be cared for, but to care not expecting to be served, but to place ourselves in the service of others, not aspiring to be materially secure, but to place our security in your love. Teach us your spirit, for it is only in loving imitation of you, Lord, that we can discover the healing springs of life that will bring about new birth our earth and hope for the world. Amen. Oracho Emparata for Peace. God, our Heavenly Father, Lord of peace and justice, we humbly come before you during this time of escalating geopolitical tensions in our part of the world. Through the years, you have sustained our faith in you as a nation. It is our faith in your divine providence that has made us survive the countless natural and human-caused calamities that have come our way in our history as a people. Spare us, Lord, from the horrors of war. Hear our pleas as we cry out to you. Have mercy on us, Lord. Rescue us from the malevolent forces that influence world leaders. For we believe that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We pray for our leaders entrusted with making crucial decisions for our nation. We place all our hopes in you, seeking your forgiveness and mercy for the times when our fears and suspicions have tainted our perceptions with ethnic biases and prejudices verging on racism. We earnestly pray, Lord, that you make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace. Pray for us. Saint Michael, the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Francis of Assisi. Pray for us. Saint Pedro. Kalunsod, pray for us. St. Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Please be seated for the announcements. We invite everyone to join us in the upcoming activities of the Edra Shrine. 
Advent na Collection on November 23 from 2 to, 2 to 5 p.m. at the main church. Recollection Masters, Reverend Father Joe Yu, LRMS. Kasalang Bayan on December 7, 2024, Saturday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon here at the main church. Interested couples who are not married in the church are required to submit the following documents to the Shrine Office on or before November 24, 2024. Baptismal and Confirmation Certificates, Certificate of No Marriage or Sinomar, issued by the Philippine Statistics Authority, and Marriage License, issued by the local or city government. Thank you for your kind attention. Prayers for the dead. In your hands, O Lord, we humbly entrust our brothers and sisters. In this life, you embrace them with your tender love. Deliver them now from every evil and bid them eternal rest. The old order has passed away. Welcome them into paradise where there will be no sorrow, no weeping or pain, but fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the almighty and loving God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give me 